Welcome back. Now I have the pleasure of presenting you another session of our Fundamentals of Protection Technology. This time I want to talk about the bus bar protection. Bus bars are the places of highest energy concentration in switchgear. Bus bar faults that are too long can easily lead to extensive damage to the primary plant. The resulting supply interruptions can have significant negative effects such as production losses, especially in industrial networks. Therefore, regardless of the voltage level, important bus bars must be protected in fast time. Protection concepts usually focus on network faults. For bus bars, on the other hand, protection concepts with higher staggered times are often accepted based on probabilities. Depending on the complexity of the bus bar system, from single to quintuple bus bar, the bus bar protection is more or less complicated. The simplest bus bar protection can be built according to the principle of reverse interlocking. The advantage of this principle lies in the fact that the application can be implemented with the same protection devices that also protect the lines and cable routes. This means that no additional equipment is required. If it is a very complex multiple bus bar structures with longitudinal and cross couplings, or if you are not satisfied with the release times of a reverse interlocking, then you have to use a specially designed bus bar protection. From the CPROTEC 5 portfolio, the 7SS85 would then be used. The principle of a reverse interlocking system can be explained very well by the switchgear shown. First of all, we assume that the incomer feeder shown above is the only feed-in. All outgoing feeders below are consumers. In this constellation, the protection device in the incomer feeder has two tasks. First, the device forms the backup protection for the protection devices in the outgoing feeder. For example, a fault in the feeder is recognized as a fault by the feeder protection. But the tripping must be set to a delay so that the feeder protection has the chance to clear the fault selectively. Second, the device represents the bus bar protection and must trip as quickly as possible in the event of a bus bar fault. For feed and protection, the two objectives are in contradiction because the bus bar protection requires in the best case an immediate tripping, which, however, would have the consequence that in the event of a fault in the outgoing feeders, a selective tripping of the feeder can no longer take place. Without a reverse interlock, the protection concept will therefore be such that the tripping time in the feed is increased. This means that an increased tripping time is accepted in the event of bus bar faults. The contradiction can be resolved by giving the incomer feeder protection information on which it can distinguish whether it is a fault in the outgoing feeder and therefore the incomer feeder protection is only the backup protection with an increased tripping time or whether it is a bus bar fault with the aim of tripping it as quickly as possible. In the picture, these two release times are indicated whereby the short time for the protection of the bus bar is given as 50 milliseconds. There is no time specification for the reserve protection level because this will always depend on the tripping times of the outgoing feeder protection devices. The information required for protection in the feed and is coupled in as a binary signal. The source is a pickup of the outgoing feeder protection devices. This means that if an outgoing feeder protection device also sees the fault, it cannot be a bus bar fault. The pickup of the outgoing feeder protection subsequently leads to a blockage of the fast stages in the incomer feeder protection. If the fault is on the bus bar shown in the figure with two, the outgoing feeder protection devices will not excite, the blocking signal will not occur. The fast stage will clear the fault with a delay time of 50 milliseconds. Under the conditions described, the principle of reverse interlocking is a good and cost-effective solution as a bus bar protection. If it is a switchgear with multiple bus bar sections with longitudinal and transverse couplings, or if there is also regenerative power via the outgoing feeders, reverse interlocking becomes more complex. If it is a multi bus bar system, there may be a regenerative power supply via the outgoing feeders, which must be taken into account, or if a tripping time of 50 milliseconds is not sufficient. All these are aspects that may lead to the fact that reverse interlocking is not used for the bus bar protection and a bus bar protection of type 7SS85 is used. Like the differential protection devices already discussed, the 7SS85 bus bar protector is based on Kirchhoff's first rule. 
which states that the sum of all currents at a node must be equal to zero. The node in this case is the bus bar. If the bus bar consists of several bus bar sections, each section again represents its own node, which must be calculated by the bus bar protection. This means that for each individual section, the bus bar protection must check whether the sum of the incoming currents is equal to the sum of the outgoing currents. The number of possible bus bar sections is a selection criterion when determining the configuration. The CPROTEC 5 portfolio includes two bus bar protection concepts, namely central and decentral. Central, the protection consists of a device to which the process signals to be detected are connected. The concept can be used for small to medium sized plants. In order not to have long current transformer connection cables, the system should not have a large spatial extension. GIS systems are typical. The central, all process signals are applied to centrally on a bay unit or merging unit. The bay unit can be mounted very close to the feeder so that short wiring paths can be realized. All bay units are connected to a central unit via fast ethernet communication. The central unit receives the recorded process signals from the bay units and evaluates them. The possibility of remote or distributed detection allows it to be used even in very large and widely extended outdoor switchgears. When defining the basic properties, it is necessary to specify the number of maximum bus bar sections. Furthermore, it must be determined whether the disconnector replica is required. The picture on the left shows a triple bus bar. Since the current flows to the first, second, or third bus bar section, depending on the disconnector position, the protection system needs the disconnector image to know which bus bar or node the measured value must be attributed to. In the figure on the right, the recorded current value can only be attributed to one bus bar section at a time. The disconnector replica is not required here. Since the two bus bar sections are connected via a measured longitudinal coupling, each bus bar half can be calculated separately. Two bus bar sections are required. I hope you enjoyed the webinar and would like to point out again that there are further chapters on the protection basics. We look forward to welcoming you again. See you next time.